What's going on everyone? This is Nick with Gold Coast Flooring and if you've been following my channel you are probably sick of watching music videos so here is a full job that I did this morning carpet stretching and cleaning and so let's get into it. So I'm doing this home in stages because there is so much to do and a lot of furniture so I'm taking care of the living room you just saw this hallway and then the bedroom to the left and here you can see the ripples are pretty bad and if you look closely they're in different directions and so the carpet has to be stretched in different directions and right there is a master bedroom there is a guest bedroom and this is the bedroom that I'm stretching and so I'm just gonna focus on what I can stretch today because those ripples are gonna have to go towards the master bedroom and I will deal with that later on so a room like this one takes about 15 to 30 minutes. The hallway is going to take a little longer because I have to splice a seam. And the seam will be a little noticeable because the light is just going right across it. That's just the way they installed this carpet. Um, sometimes you don't have the greatest choices to work with. So I'm just going to do the best I can to blend it in and make it work. So here you can see I've got everything under furniture sliders. I buy these by the pack at Harbor Freight. They are so cheap and they're huge. So they're really good to get all the furniture underneath them and get everything moved. And whenever I do a seam like this that's going across a large hallway or anything where there's a lot of foot traffic, I always use my cool top iron and the seamer down now. I do not use my Black & Decker to do a seam like this. And it seems that people love making comments about seam sealer and sealing edges, but when I use the seamer down now, it actually pulls the glue up into the backing, and I've found that it pulls the glue up into the edge of that backing, and that acts as a sealer itself. And so after the carpet stretched over, I use some sort of straight edge or something to mark where I should cut, and then I just use my top cutter and I make my cut for my seam. Also a quick tip when you're pulling up carpet, uh, be careful because a lot of the times on the edges the seam will start coming apart if you rip it too fast and that stuff will just come unrolled like a fruit roll up. And here you can see I'm on the second story so I use nails to hold the carpet into the subfloor. If on concrete I usually just use two power stretchers. And that's it. Everything is stretched over, seamed, and good to go. And then after carpet stretching, usually what will happen is where the ripples were, it will still have that indent. It'll still look like there's a, a ripple there, but it's actually flat. It's just like when you crease up a piece of paper for so long and then you flatten it out, it will still have all the lines where the, the creases were. And over time with vacuuming and foot traffic, that will that friction will make it relax more. And then as the season changes go, it'll contract and expand and it will become level and that mark will completely disappear. And here you can see there are still some ripples because I still have to stretch into this room and I have to stretch into the master room and that's going to be for next time. And next is the carpet cleaning but it's a little boring so here's a quick time lapse. And that's it. About 450 square feet of carpet cleaning and carpet stretched. And that is another job well done over here in Rockland, California. Thanks for taking time out of your day to watch my video. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks everyone. Have a great day.